Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast episode 21. My name is Hannah and you can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. I am a mum of two little girls living in the northern part of Tasmania, Australia and I knit, crochet, spin, dye yarn and do some sewing and um, spinning if I didn't mention that. So welcome to my studio. This is where a lot, I do a lot of my um, creative things and um, I'm here today to share with you some of um, the knitting and dyeing and sewing that I have been up to in the last couple of weeks. So welcome everyone. And today I am wearing the Tulip Fields Shawl by Caroline Sala of um, Sasu Yarns and the podcast. I knit this as a test knit for Caroline and she has now released the pattern on Ravelry. And if you go to my project page, uh, so the pro project for Rose Hip Chick, I have linked the pattern in my notes. And for those of you that might be watching for the first time, and thank you for checking me out. Um, everything I talk about, all my projects, I have um, notes for in Ravelry. So you can always go into Ravelry for my projects and have a look if there's anything you're interested in and if I don't mention it when I talk about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So also thank you to those of you that are coming back to watch uh, another episode. Um, and Again, as always, thank you to new subscribers, new members of the group and anyone who's um, taken part in the communication um, on the group and just by sending me messages. Thank you everyone. It's the 3rd of November today. I have one little girl sleeping and the, another, and the other one is watching a Tinkerbell movie. It's a bit of a grey and cold day today so it's um, just a nice day for relaxing and taking it easy I think. Um, I have my show notes and I'm trying to um, remember everything I have planned to say. I'm just drinking some of my green coconut tea. It is a little bit chilly and of course out here in the studio I don't have any heating or anything so coming from inside the house I always feel a little bit cold, unless it's a really hot day. Um, I'll, I'll also do a few more thank yous here at the start, and it will sort of be new things as well that I normally do at, towards the end of the episode, but I'll just do them all at the start. And then I'll talk a bit about some projects that I finished and that I'm working on with knitting, some sewing that I did, some um, dyeing that I have been doing, as you can see back here again, and um, I have some knit along, crochet along, spin along news that I'll talk about, and I might do that <clears throat> after the thank yous. So um, let's get going. So um, I'd like to say Thank you to Christina of Christina's Knitting Corner. I entered into her um, rose knit along with the Phoenix hat that I have. I've shown you that in previous episodes that I did, and I was really lucky and I won one of her prizes. And um, it was really neatly um, wrapped and beautiful little packet with this beautiful wrapping paper and I had tea and a little moth repellent sachet all very beautiful but what I mostly would like to show you are the stitch markers by Shaitan Designs on Etsy which I really love and I've, I have purchased stitch markers from Shaitan Designs before and I really like them so I just would like to recommend those if anyone's after stitch markers. So thank you Christina for that beautiful little package. And then I am um, 
I had been stalking Italia Yarns for a little bit and with Nina on Give Me a Crown podcast with her talking about um, Meg and her yarns a bit more and talking about her favourite bases and with her Aussie knit along that she has um, going on now in her Ravelry group I just I could not resist the temptation anymore so when Meg listed some new skeins of her pinnacle base which is a a single fingering weight I went ahead and purchased some of that and I haven't unwrapped it yet so I'm sorry you can't see it very well so that's I tell you yarns so that's a beautiful grey and I thought that would be really nice and Meg of Atelier Yarns and Design she also has a um, a few patterns that are beautiful but she has a current one that's a very nice and lacy one and I'll put the, the name of it down here because I can't remember at the moment but I purchased that pattern as well and this yarn might become that but I'd like to say a very big thank you to Meg because when she sent me the yarn that I purchased she also sent another skein for a giveaway so this is a beautiful sort of raspberry red color and this is the um, sock bay so the colorist I think it's called so it's um, a wool nylon blend and it's beautiful so this will be one prize for the craft along that we have started so I'll talk about that now but thank you me um, I was so happy to receive that now I'll stop with the crinkling so I decided after some suggestions from Amy um, who's a member of our group and a viewer she I've decided after she suggested to have a undyed knit along that why not that sounds like fun so what I did first was that I was that I went into Ravelry and I I just sort of searched with the keyword cow and undyed and natural color and things like that because I I did not want to exactly copy another knit along that's like currently currently going on and I couldn't find one so I thought okay well that's good and I tried to set up the details and the rules for the cow so that it would be easy to double dip in other cows and um, what we'll do for anyone who's interested and this is a knit along crochet along spin along and there's um, works in progress are fine I've started it on 1st of November but really if you had started it before that's fine we'll go until the 10th of January I thought we'll give us you know like a week and a bit after all the holidays and stuff and um, just make something that contains partly or completely some undyed natural color fiber or yarn and um, so it doesn't have to be the whole project so if you just like do color work and part of it is just like a natural color that's fine if you want to process a fleece and spin that up totally natural that's fine too and um, it doesn't matter how much you use you can make several projects and have several entries and I think that's the main things and when I did the search for other cows I did find a couple that I thought I mentioned just because they, um, they would be suitable for double dipping so the first one is in the 90% knitting group for the 90% knitting podcast by Fiber Nymph and this is a podcast that I used to watch and then 
I probably got busy with children and moving and when I didn't really watch podcasts on iTunes anymore I just sort of forgot about that podcast I had I stopped watching it for a while but now I've rediscovered it and I I really love the podcast um yes it's just it's um has interesting content and she's well spoken anyway she has a natural color undyed spin long going on from the 15th of November until I think the end of the year and that's um, the details of that I um, I have actually linked to in the shatter thread for our craft along the other one is by knit British podcast she's doing a breed swatch along so she's trying to get people to find local wool to spin or to just yarn to knit and then make swatches and basically fill in like a little form of the characteristics characteristics of the yarn and a few other details and then she's putting all this together for just like an amazing source of all these different breeds so that's also something you could do and then put that in as an entry into our cal as well anyway all the details are up in Ravelry but I think I'm, I mentioned the most important things uh, okay and I have um, a few skeins of undyed yarn and some fiber that I I'm choosing between to work up for this knit along or craft along but I think I'll show them to you at the end of this episode because um, I've already talked quite a bit without even showing off any of my knitting so that's what we'll we'll do now we'll talk about my knitting so I have one finished object and I must say I worked pretty hard on this for the first week after the last podcast these are my Agatha socks by Claire of NH Knits I don't have sock blockers and I honestly don't think I'll, I'll get sock blockers because I don't block my socks um, I have photos of me wearing them on my project my Ravelry project page so if you want to see what they look like there um, you can do it you can see them there or I have photos on Instagram as well I used a regular tweed in the 000090 color this is one of the yarns that Claire used for her samples I really love how they came out I really love the different color tweety bits I did my leg quite a bit longer than I normally do but I like them I think I used about 80 grams for these which is quite a bit more than I normally use for a pair of socks and they yes they fit really well it was the only thing that I knit on for the week after I podcast to get, to get them done for them Agatha knit along that Claire was hosting and I knit them on a two millimeter needle because normally I do a 2.25 millimeter needle but the stitch count for these were greater than I normally do so I thought with a smaller needle hopefully I get a, a better fit but they're really stretchy and they fit really well I made a smaller size in the pattern there's two sizes in the pattern so thank you Claire for not only giving a pattern as a prize for our last um knit long but also for giving me one copy of the pattern thank you so that's what I finished and since that was basically what I worked on for a week I have not got a lot of other knitting to do 
I did not have I do not have a lot of other knitting that I have been doing. I have been starting a job, as I have mentioned before. I have two days a week of work, excuse me, in a lab and an office. And um, those two days were normally the days when I would work from home and do my bookkeeping job. But it also gave me time to do things around the house, and you know, every time I had a break, I could knit because the children were not at home. Now, of course, when I work from outside the home, that time for knitting and relaxing when I have a break is not there anymore. And I don't, I'm not able to do any knitting or crafting on my commute or anything. It's really close, it's just a short car drive. I'm there. And then it's seven to eight hours of work and just a short lunch break. And so that's completely changed how my week looks. And after not only working for eight hours in the day, but first getting the children ready in the morning for school and childcare and coming home, making sure they get dinner and making them ready for bed. By the time I can sit down and have my own time, I'm so tired that I have not been doing a lot of knitting those two days and of course the rest of the week is just busy with the children but I sneak out uh, sneak in some knitting here and there so I do still get things done and um, so I'll quickly show you the other pairs of socks other pair of socks that I have been working on I have not been doing a lot on these these are my just plain vanilla socks cuff down fish Lip Kiss Heel in the Regia, no, sorry, in the Opal Surprise Yarn. I do them on the 9 inch circular, and I think I was not, I have not knit much on this sock. No, sorry, I have not knit much on this sock, and I have knit a little bit more on this one. But yes, not much to progress to show on those. This is a nice uh, little knit to have. For when I have just a short moment to do a little bit of knitting. And the other thing that I had on the go last time, and this is in my um, knit stitch and bits. Oh my goodness, I normally know this name so easily, but today I just totally God. Anyway, I love this bag. Sort of locally made to me. Bit of details down here. Um, so I am making the Praline cardigan by Gudrun Johnston. I have been working on this for a while because every time I've had a test knit or a cow that I want to finish something for, I've put this down. But I've decided now that I'll try to knit on this I have a little bit of time at night so when I'm not too tired so during the day I'll knit on socks or if I have a little bit of time in the morning on my days at home uh, I'll do some other things but I, I want to work on this a little bit every week so I'm trying to do this at night so it doesn't look like I'm much further than I was but I have actually made the two little pockets so this <clears throat> I've, I've spent a bit of time on this cardigan but it's not very fast going, it's quite slow going I'm knitting this out of the San Nascar Mini Duet which is a merino cotton blend. I think it's sort of a fingering weight. So I have I have been working a little bit on that but not very much. It looks to me like my cardigan is coming out quite wide but I just I put quite a lot of quite a lot of time into it already and I 
don't want to think about it too much so I'm just going to knit it and just follow the pattern exactly and hopefully I'll have a wearable cardigan at the end of it. We'll see. I have made cardigans before that are not okay for anyone to wear but we'll see. Actually when I saw um, again Christina knitting Christina's knitting catch up she had a cardigan she made recently and that turned out too white and she did some sewing on the inside of it and um, it looked fine to me so I guess that's an option. We'll see. Then I have one other thing that I am actively working on and that's a new test knit that I only just started. This is a bag that I made. I am <clears throat> excuse me, doing a test knit. Um, it's a shawl and again by Meg of Atelier Yarns and Designs. So she has a few shawl designs and I think I have I had two previously and now I'm test knitting one. So after test knitting these I still have two more that I would like to knit. And this one she calls Sandbar. And I have not got very far on it, so I think it's okay if I, I show it. And I have my um, wine maker sister stitch marker on there, which I, I really like those ones. <laughs> so funny. Cute. So I've just gone this far. I've got this much on my needle. And this is a skein of yarn that I dyed. A while back I think it was one of the first things that I dyed when I started dyeing with acid dyes and I've had this skein I had two of them actually but I gave one to mum because they've just been sitting in my stash for so long and the skein I tried to make a beautiful cake out of it but it's been sitting in my stash for so long and I don't know what I have been doing with it when I dyed it but it was a big tangle I just had to wind it by hand. So sort of a lavender and darker purple and a dark blue colour. And I really like how it's coming out. I think it will be beautiful. So it's um, sort of a shawl, textures, stitches. It's not a lace shawl. And I think it, I think it will look great. So they are the things I have been knitting on. Another thing that I, I every day think, oh, I would like to do this now, but I just, I'm never in the right mindset for it. I don't feel like I have, have the time or the brain to do it. And that's my mitten design. I don't have... Oh yes, I do have, I've shown you a few times before, I never really get anywhere on it. I have just a little bit of, I just have a cuff for a mitten that I wanted to do some colour work for. And I have some different sketches and yes, not getting anywhere with that. So what I did with this in mind was that I joined the Jolie's Kitchen Design Boot Camp, I think she calls it. Jolie's Kitchen is a podcast. And excuse me, she now has a boot camp for designers. So every week there's a little task to do. So like the first week was to make a swatch, not a gauge swatch, but just sort of to play with your stitches and what sort of pattern you wanted to do. The second week was to do a sketch and she's put these on, um, on YouTube where she has her podcast and there's also a thread in her Ravelry group with all the information but I signed up and I have still not done any work. I have watched her YouTube videos and I have read her information on the Ravelry group and I have watched the other participants and what they have been doing but I need to catch up on that so we'll see. I might not end up doing mittens for it, I might just do something completely different that I feel like I can 
easily um, work on. But that's it. And next on my show notes, I have the knit along, but I have already talked about that. I have been doing dyeing, as you can see. These are some new yarn bases that I got in, and I they're mostly colorways that I have repeated that I have um, done before, so I don't really think there's any point in showing them to you any closer because I have shown them in previous episodes when I before I went to Sweden and did the market there, I dyed those up. And I have got some more yarn in and I've started to do a bit of more dyeing. I wasn't doing it for a while because I don't need to dye more things for myself. But then my mum was interested in doing a market here in Tasmania when she comes over for Christmas and well, she'll be here for two months, December to February. And um, she does markets in Sweden and she was interested in doing one here. Still not sure which one will do or which ones are happening around the time she's here. But I thought I'll start dyeing up some yarn and I'll, I'll have it there if we go to a market. So I, because I just love doing it. But I can't just keep dyeing things and have them sitting in my stash. <laughs> so... We'll see. There might be some other options happening in the future. We'll see. The other thing I have been doing is sewing. And I sewed these two giant bags behind me here. Might be able to grab one. These are just some really simple drawstring bags that I made out of some fabric I've had sitting in my stash for a long time and these are full of the fleece that I have washed because I know that um, a lot of people store their fleece sorry a lot of people store their fleece in all pillowcases and I didn't really have any that I could use for for this so I am um, I thought I had I have some fabric in my stash that I don't really think I'll use for anything else. And it was on, it was just like a bargain price and I had a good amount of it. So I thought I'll just make up bags and put the fleece in those. So I have those two and that's one fleece. So I still have one that I need to make one or two bags for. It's a bit smaller the other one, so it might be enough with the one bag. But yes, I've I've worked on that and then it was so dirty here in the studio after having the fleece there and everything. So yesterday I just decided to clean it all up. So I vacuumed and just cleaned, sorted and try to get things organised in here. So I feel quite happy in here now. It looks nice. So that's probably what I have been doing but I'd like to show you some of the undyed fibers and yarn that I have some of my most precious items in my stash I guess because I do have a few skeins that I have sort of just bought to um, when they were on sale just to try some dyeing but then I have a few skeins that I have bought because I wanted to have a really good quality yarn for dyeing or it was just beautiful so I, I bought it and lately I have bought a few different breeds and things just to try and I'm, I'm looking for a good yarn base for dyeing one that is Australian, New Zealand, like local to me anyway I have a few things and I thought I'll uh, share them with you so the first one is Hazelwood Farming Melton Park and this can be found as Melton Park on Etsy 
and this is a Tasmanian Leicester wool. So this is rustic <laughs> wool and I think it's about a DK weight. I bought this at my local yarn shop. I think she must have just bought some from, from the farm. But after, um, when I looked them up, I found that they have, they are on Etsy and they sell everything from fleeces to top to yarn that has been spun. And um, it varies the availability. I have seen the hang, like 500 gram hangs, I think they sell of the yarn. I've seen them available for a few months and then they're not there anymore. So I don't know if they just take them down or if they sell and then it takes a bit of time before they have more available. But that's, I thought that's very local to me and it's um, different than the merino and other things that I normally use. So I was very interested to see how that will work out. The lighting is very bad today because it's just very overcast outside. So I have no idea what to make out of it. First I thought I'll dye it, but now I'm not so sure anymore. But that's one. Another one that I have that is also very local, it's also Tasmanian, is a skein of white gum wool. And um, really, if you don't know about white gum wool, you should look them up online. They have a beautiful website with a lot of great information. My mum actually bought this when she was here last time and she bought it in Ross, um, sort of halfway between Hobart and Launceston, I think. They have a wool centre there and they sell a few um, different things there. They have dyes and wool and other things. But this is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'll see if I put down some information. I think I did. Yes, this is a 17 micron Saxon Merino. So it's so precious that I'm... It's too precious to put any dye on it, really, but um, we'll see. It's the softest thing. Another, the last yarn that I have is one that I purchased recently. It's from um, Tarn Dye in Victoria. I found them through Instagram somehow. You know how you end up seeing something from someone and go to a website and yes. So this is a 200 gram DK weight. I'm so sorry that they're not showing off very well. And um, this is a Polworth. And this is Polworth from the one farm in Victoria and it has been spun in New Zealand and I was interested in the the four ply the fingering weight for dyeing but they didn't have any white available so I bought I, I bought the eight ply the DK weight just to see what it's like but the lady there Wendy I think she was very kind and sent me a sample of the fingering weight in the the brown colour. So these are all natural colours. And uh, yes, Polworth from this one farm in Victoria. And the website is also beautiful. And it is nice and soft. And um, yes, I don't know what I can make with that, but... We'll see, see if I dye it or if I just use it the way it is, see if I do something for this cow. The last thing I have, I mean, you have seen my fleece, my um, merino fleece, that is a natural brown. So I could process that and spin that and do that as a part of this cow. But another thing that I've had in my stash for a while that my mum bought for me in Sweden actually from it's called and I don't know that they're actually operating anymore they're called 
I can't see it. It's called Spin Spiration. Se, and this is a Gotland, and it's a hundred gram, and I have three of those. It's again been in my stash for quite some time, so it seems to be a bit filtered, but I'm sure that I can work with that. I could even put it on my carders that are back there and um, work on that a little bit and then spin something up. And I think Gotland is so beautiful, it is a bit rough, rustic. Um, it's so beautiful. I don't think I would like to mix it with anything. I think I would just like to use it the way it is. But probably spin it as thin as I can and make a shawl or something. Because if it's really thin, I don't think it will be really rough on your skin. But yes, that's another alternative that I have for our knit along. So I've shown you those and um, that's mostly what I have for this time. But no, wait, my mum sent me a beautiful package and I'll show you that. She had made some project bags for me. So this is the one. I think these are from the Pearl Soho, Pearl Soho website, a tutorial for these, for the patterns. So she made me this beautiful one. She has not used interfacing but I I quite like that because it means that I can really sort of make them flat and they won't take much room. I have a few bags like that and they're, it's quite useful with bags like that sometimes. The other one she made was this one so it's similar it's just a different handle and I found out I love this fabric I found out it's an IKEA fabric and <laughs> it was so funny I watched um, the Show Mei Lin podcast a couple of days ago and I just realised that her curtains are made out of this fabric. That was so funny. So in these bags, mum put some yarn that she had bought for me. And I'll show you because it's quite, um, quite cool. It is onion nettle sock yarn. And Onion is a Danish brand. And this nettle sock yarn says strength from the nettles. Sock yarn in nature of fibres. 70% wool and 30% nettle fibres. And um, it says 2.5 millimetre needles. Made in Italy, but it is a Danish brand. So it's superwash wool and nettle fibres. So I have a green colour one, a purple, and a sort of blue-grey colour. So they will become something beautiful. I'm not sure what they will be yet. And then there was one more skein she sent me. I think they only had one of these. This is a thicker um, base. I think it might be DK. And it's organic wool and nettles. So, again, 70 organic wool and 30 nettles, 80 metres in this 50 gram skein. So, that was very sweet of mum to send me those, and I thought they were a bit different. I think people, viewers who are out there who might be in Sweden might know about that yarn, but other, maybe viewers in Australia or even the United States might not have seen that before so I just thought I'd share that with you. My computer is going a little bit crazy in telling me that it's running out of space and stuff. Unfortunately every time I do a podcast it gets harder and harder to um, do all the behind the scenes work because the computer is not coping <laughs> as well anymore. I don't really have the time to um, sort of go through all my files and fix things and Oh, I do remember my shop. I do this every time, don't I? Um, yes, I should put some time into clearing off the computer, saving things on an external disk, just doing things like that. But that's additional time 
and really I like to put a time into recording but hopefully there won't be a crash or anything like that anytime soon. Thank you for joining me today and um, sharing with me what I have been making. Please let me know what you're working on um, and what you think about what I have talked about in the episode thread uh, for this episode in Ravelry. Every episode I post in Ravelry in thread. So any comments, any feedback, please put them there. And if you want to show me what you're working on, if you have any thoughts about the cow, the natural color uh, cow, undyed yarn, fiber cow, there is a thread with chatter. I haven't made a FO thread yet, but in the other thread that has all the information, please, um, even if you're not joining in, you don't think you have the time, you don't have the stash to do it, but just, um, I'll be happy to hear any thoughts about what your favorite fiber is or what you would make if you have the time, had the time. If you're joining in, um, please let me know also your thoughts and what you're planning to do um, and if you're double dipping with other cows let me know that as well so yes just be in touch I love it thank you again everyone I um, finish my tea now and go inside and maybe I'll catch the end of the Tinkerbell movie Woo. <laughs> okay um, have a great time until I see you next time in about two weeks. Take care. Bye.